Pluto TV, which is owned by our parent company, Paramount Global, is turning 10 today. Pluto TV has a free TV streaming service, of course, with hundreds of channels, movies, and series, all uh, available on demand. But what some people don't know is that one of Pluto's TV's missions is to make Pluto a planet again. Hmm, <laughs> how's that for a tie-in? Yeah. <laughs> Meteorologist Raina Jerka is here with more on that and a very special guest you spoke to. Yes, Dr. Alan Stern at UCLA and they've mm -hmm. got a really great event coming up on Monday and he's been a huge proponent for getting Pluto reclassified as a planet. So, Ross, it's been 18 years since Pluto was demoted. And as uh, fellow Pluto <laughs> generational people, some in the scientific community think it's time Pluto should be a planet again. And today I spoke to Dr. Alan Stern, who leads NASA's New Horizons mission to explore Pluto and the Kuiper Belt. So I know you're a big supporter of the underdog planet. Talk to me a little bit about your work and why Pluto is such a big debate for those of us who don't know. Yeah, it's really a simple story. I'm a planetary scientist and there are a lot of them in the LA basin, the LA area. There are a lot of uh, uh, planetary scientists at UCLA where our event's gonna be on Monday for Pluto TV. And uh, you know, it, in the 20th century, um, the telescope technology only allowed us to know that there were nine planets. But at the very end of the 20th century, we started discovering a lot more. And some people reacted to that poorly and said, well, we just can't have too many planets because, you know, uh, school kids can't memorize the names of them. I always thought that was not a very scientific argument. You know, we have well north of 100 elements in the periodic table. Uh, we have countless rivers, mountains, asteroids, galaxies, and stars. Um, and and uh, most planetary scientists um, believe that uh, the most logical classification scheme is one where even small planets are planets and that the number of them is just whatever we discover. It shouldn't be set by some rules that's meant to just keep the number small. And so when you see that picture of Pluto, you know, if you saw it on, the, on a Star Trek episode, you'd say, oh, they've showed up at some planet. Um, and that's because Pluto, its geology, its geophysics, the way it was formed, all those things have all the hallmarks of planets, even like the Earth. So uh, Pluto belongs as a, just as much a planet as a chihuahua is a dog. <laughs> I love that. And I'm of the Pluto generation as well. So I concur. But how do different scientific communities, including astronomers, planetary scientists, and educators, perceive Pluto's status, their status? And what are the key arguments of each perspective? You talked a little bit about, you know, children being able to learn a massive amount of information. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that reaction is going on in the community. Well, you know, science isn't about uh, memorizing things. Um, uh, for example, take the rivers of the Earth. You know, there are countless rivers on the Earth. You can look them all up in a book, but you don't have to know the names of all of them. You simply have to know that there are a lot, and you can look them up, and maybe you were taught the largest river, you know, is, you know, like the, uh, the Ganges or the Nile or the most, you know, some of the largest rivers. The Amazon is the very largest. The Mississippi's in that class. But um, I think planets are going the same way as as. Uh, other things in geology. Um, we can look them all up in a book, and it's wonderful to know that the universe is really good at making planets, that even our own solar system has a lot of them. And I don't much care what astronomers think. They're not planetary scientists. They have a separate specialty with galaxies and the origin of the universe and faraway things like pulsars uh, and supernova. Uh, it's really what planetary scientists think. Uh, I would make the analogy that if, you know, if you had a tax problem, you'd probably go to a tax lawyer, not a divorce lawyer. Um, you shouldn't go to an astronomer for a subject in, in planetary science or go to a planetary scientist for a subject in faraway astronomy. We're just not expert enough. And like you said, we can have a vast information of knowledge on everything. I mean, we know so much about Mars. We know about Olympus Mons. There are so many things that we learn. We, we could be learning about Pluto as well. So how might reclassifying Pluto affect public perception and interest in space exploration and science and most importantly, education? Well, I think it's going to really uh, catapult people's interest in the exploration of our solar system, knowing that uh, this third class of planet, the dwarf planets, which we now know outnumber 
all the other planets in our solar system combined. I think that's that's a new a kind of paradigm. It's really exciting that the solar system didn't just make nine planets. It's probably made 99 or more. And I'm just giving you that number um, as a round you know, estimate of there are going to be a lot of planets discovered as we look farther and farther out with technology. And uh, I think it's going to excite people's interest, even to send missions to those faraway places. I mean, look at Voyager. We're still looking at what it's accomplishing. So I definitely think that sending missions out to the beyond is, is the next step. And as we mentioned, Pluto TV is turning 10 and hosting a special event on Monday at UCLA. And you're going to be at that. So tell us a little bit about what's going to happen and your part in it. Yeah, Pluto TV is getting ahead of the ball uh, and helping to shape public opinion. Um, to match scientific opinion on this topic of Pluto being a planet. Um, the event is at 11.30 uh, on uh, on Monday morning. It's at UCLA's Bruin Plaza. I'm going to be there. I think a lot of people are going to be there. Uh, I know Neil Tyson uh, is has a, uh, some recorded amar- remarks. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully you guys will cover it. That sounds great. And we can do an eight clap for Pluto. How about that? Instead of an eight clap for UCLA, we can make an eight clap for Pluto. A nine clap, right? I'm there with you. It's a nine clap. (laughs) There we go. All right, Dr. Stern, thank you so much for your time. And I'm looking forward to Monday night. Thanks. See you soon. Oh, wow. I'm of the Pluto generation. Yes. Pluto is a planet generation. It's Me hard to too. think of it any other way. No. And really, there's so much we can learn, even mm-hmm. if you keep it as a classification as a dwarf planet, but mm-hmm. a planet Pluto, you can learn so much. And mm-hmm. I think kids really can get excited about that and have that vast knowledge. Like I said, everyone knows mm-hmm. everything about Mars and it's boring now. So oh, oh, let's oh. just keep moving on. <laughs> I, I have going. two interesting factoids to share with you about yes. Pluto. First of all, if Pluto, if the Earth was the size of a nickel, Pluto would be the size of a kernel of popcorn. Oh, I like that. that. That's how much uh, smaller it is. Smaller it is, yes. It's it's half the size of the United States, actually. Mm -hmm. But here is a better uh, factoid for you. Today of all days, on the home opener of the Dodgers, it was actually pitcher Clayton Kershaw's great uncle who discovered Pluto back in 1930. I had no idea. Yeah, Look at you, you're just can, can this you is plethora it? of knowledge here. Yeah, yeah, and it was his daughter, actually, that named Pluto uh, for the Roman god of the underworld. And a lot of people think it's the Disney character, but no. the Disney character wasn't even <laughs> wasn't even made yet when <laughs> that was going on. But, uh, but yes, that's right, I did know about the Roman god. Okay. I know, can you believe this? Like, another reason to love the Dodgers on this home opener? There we go, go blue. <laughs> Clayton Kershaw, next time you see him, say something. Thanks to your great uncle. Yes, go Pluto.